Conrad Black was one of the last great newspaper proprietors on this planet. His empire was taken away from him by the usual stitch-up from America's Department of Justice. He fought those scoundrels all the way to the Supreme Court and eventually won with a nine-zip decision in his favor. Alas, too late, as he was already in prison. And as Conrad likes to put it, he was merely another unjustly convicted black in an American penitentiary. But he's a great survivor, and we're glad to welcome the Right Honourable, the Lord Black of Cross Harbour, to our show, live from uh, Toronto. Conrad, um, well, you, the thing that always strikes me about you, and you demonstrated this just a few days ago when you returned from London to Toronto, you were treated appallingly uh, by the most powerful government on earth, uh, and you fought them all the way. And no one, you are about the least um, anti-American, non-American on the planet. And amazingly, that uh, appears to have survived your time in prison. You, are, you're, you, you don't seem to have any bitterness about what the United States uh, did to you. And, uh, and in fact, you're, you're more optimistic about the United States than many Americans are. Uh, yeah, that is not the whole picture. Uh, Mark, I have uh, considerable <laughs> misgivings about uh, the way things are conducted, especially in the justice system in that country. And I, I can't say that I have no bitterness, but I direct it towards individuals and not the country as a whole. I, I think the United States is a magnificent country, but has, of course, substantial problems. I, I, I do think in their present terrible regime, uh, a ludicrous um, a, a masquerade of a government, a gong show that can't do anything right, just a, an endless succession of disasters and embarrassments, I occasionally take a slight comfort in it as something that is not altogether bad for the American character. But I do admire it as a country. It's had uh, an immensely positive impact on the world. It's had the fastest rise of any great nation or people in history. And, and I am, I am uh, optimistic because I am sure that what we're seeing now is an aberration. And, and I have hopes that we're, even in this uh, dreadful trial in Minnesota going on now, uh, the, the uh, uh, Kyle, um, what, 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 what's his name? Rittenhouse. It's a three-letter word. Uh, did Kyle Tillotson or something. Uh, it, it, that trial. Yeah. Uh, you, you can see the prosecutors being debunked and abandoned by the American media, finally. So, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's a great country that has a lot of problems. I happen to be a victim, but I survived it. And, and we need it. If we didn't have the United States, we would lose everything in the West. I mean, Europe does not have the, the will or the cohesion to defend Western civilization for five minutes. And we can't count on the East Asians to do it for us. We have to have the Americans. So uh, part of my apparent indulgence and, and patience and affection is that we have no choice. Systematically examine the persistence of racism. Well, uh, I remember a couple States. of years ago, uh, in fact, with uh, Nigel Farage, and you and, and I the question, and Nigel were the all talking, and you were saying, well, uh, if we could just get out of the European Union and you could get the old gang back to get the boys in the band back together again, the UK, Canada, and then there's Australia, a New Zealand, issue India, in you would have uh, that group alone would have a, a, as big a GDP as the United States. How do you think Boris um, but to is handling uh, Brexit and the UK's reemergence so into the, the wider world? That, um, racism is actually uh, by the way, I still right? hold the view you um, just attributed to me. I, I, I think that's what we should do. I think Ted Heath made a terrible mistake a putting the, the Australians and Canadians white, over the, the side and leaping kind of headfirst into Europe. Uh, 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 sorry, I still hold to that view. Uh, as for Boris, uh, I, I think he argued. deserves great um, credit for, for slicing the Gordian knot with Brexit. And I think he was doing well in relations with Trump. It's awfully hard to get anything going with the Biden administration. 
Commission. We were, uh, uh, but I, I, I was the seem to have more uh, uh, confidence in Boris as his former employer uh, than cases, many of his countrymen, I mean, many of his other countrymen, of course, country, as you can tell from my uh, accent, we I'm also British and proud to be so, of, but, of, of uh, and, and a member of their country. parliament. So, but I think Boris will work it out. I've confidence in Boris, but he's having a he's having a rough uh, a rough time now. Framed what eventually became America. Well, since you brought uh, yes, up that you employed the Boris having, for many years uh, and know him better the power, than anyone, um, I don't think the, I'm giving election any so on, secrets is also away here. When real, you employed him to edit the Spectator, well. uh, mm -hmm. it, it struck me as a writer for the Spectator that it was all the other fellows around him who did all the work. And, and Boris behaved essentially as a constitutional monarch. I'm not sure uh, he can get away with that when there's an actual <coughs> constitutional monarch in Her Majesty the Queen doing all that kind of thing. Are you confident that having, uh, having put all those canny, clever, surrounded him by people who did all the work at The Spectator, that he's actually surrounded by people who are doing all the work at 10 Downing Street? Uh, no, I'm not. And I don't think the people who surround him now are as capable as those who did at The Spectator. Of course, there were other problems with Boris at The Spectator, but it must be said, uh, it, the system worked. It, it was a very successful magazine. Its profits went up, its circulation went up, and the, the quality of the product, and you were part of it, Mark, uh, improved. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, Boris was a successful editor, but except that his methods were very unorthodox, and I think he's a very unorthodox prime minister. But I, 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 I think he has to strengthen his team, and, and, uh, and I assume he will. Uh, I, I, I don't have the impression that Boris is a flash in the pan. I think he, he recognizes problems and does respond to them. I mean, he did. He really did get a hold of the Brexit issue in a way that no one else could, and I think we we have to try and inspire ourselves with the view that that was an example of what he can and will do, not some of the floundering that that we've seen on some other issues. Well, let me let me ask you then about the real uh, big picture. Uh, Conrad, because you're a, you're a great historian. You wrote a magnificent book charting the rise of the United States, and then you did a, a similar book uh, charting the rise of Canada, which uh, to the rest of the world is a far more difficult trick to pull off. Um, but if that's... Uh, yeah. You're looking at the world as the map is, with the Greenwich Meridian running through London and North America on one side, and Europe on the other. China figures that isn't where the center of the world is anymore. China figures that the center of the world is just about where Bagram Air Base is, because you're, uh, you know, you're near to China, you're near to India, you're near to Russia, you're near to Iran. And it's China's world, and the West doesn't, the, the Euro-American uh, civilization just doesn't get it yet and doesn't know it. Uh, yes, I, no, I don't think they think it's at Bagram. I think they think it's at Beijing. But it, we, we have to, <laughs> at the same time that we must treat the Chinese challenge with great respect and determination, we, we would shortchange ourselves if we didn't see a few of their frailties. It's still 40% a command economy. You can't believe one statement that the Chinese government utters or one figure that it publishes. Uh, it, it was so heavy-handed in its exercise of its influence in Myanmar that even the Burmese colonels threw them out. Uh, and, and the Japanese and the Indians are, along with the Koreans and the Vietnamese and the Taiwanese, the most enthusiastic encouragers of the Trump policy of recognizing in a civilized and balanced way the Chinese challenge. Now, I have grave doubts that the current regime in Washington is, is up to managing it very well, but uh, we only have another three years of that. Uh, I, I, the fact is the United States is fundamentally a much stronger country than China. Uh, China is a poor country. It has virtually no resources, uh, and, and, and it uh, is a very corrupt government, and none of its institutions, apart from the military, uh, has any respect inside China or, or outside China. And um, I, I, I think that the real danger would be if the West, and the Americans in particular, pushed the Russians into the arms of China, and the Russians 
effectively rented part of Siberia to China, who would then move in some of their surplus population and exploit the resources in Siberia right. in a manner that the Russians never have, then we would have a much more serious geopolitical threat. But just this uh, totalitarian yeah. regime uh, that they have now, um, running that country as they do, and, and in the guise of their belt and road squandering a lot of money that they're ultimately going to lose in countries that they're going to try unsuccessfully to bully, uh, are just inviting a containment strategy somewhat replicative of the one that operated successfully opposite the Soviet Union to be put together by India and Japan and the states between them with American encouragement. And I, I think that's what we're gradually going to settle into. Uh, but it will take statesmanship in Washington that I don't think we're going to get in the next three years, but we will after that. Well, you, that Siberian situation is, uh, is great because China's got all these uh, surplus young men uh, that have no women folk and uh, and eastern russia and siberia uh, is all full of uh, wizened babushkas whose husbands all keeled over in the vodka and died at 53 so there might actually be a uh, natural demographic solution there although perhaps the chinese young men yeah, might yeah. not care for it but let me ask you you keep saying oh three years time the, this government's a disaster in washington but three years time three years time are you entirely confident? I mean, we saw this election in Virginia that Nigel Farage uh, discussed <coughs> on his show uh, a couple of nights ago. Even, even with every, every fiasco hung around Joe Biden's neck, uh, whatever you're talking about, whether it's Afghanistan or domestic policy or the open southern border, which, which makes southern England look like the Berlin Wall, um, even with all that, uh, it was a squeaker of an election. Are you really confident that uh, that the Democrats are not going to be able to uh, to take 2024? Uh, I am. I'm very confident of that. Uh, they will have three more years of, of this uh, administration that, unless they have a complete change of personnel and policy, and I don't think they're capable of either, is going to be a failure in every area, as it already is. You know, for, from Afghanistan to a critical race theory, the atomization of the country, the the woke American self hate, which has never been uh, it's never been popular. I mean, my late friend Malcolm Muggeridge used to refer to the great liberal death mm -hmm. wish, and he thought it had determinately afflicted much of Europe. But it, it, that it had never taken hold in the U.S., and it was rejected. I, I, I think more telling, in a way, was that. Uh, New Jersey, a state carried by Biden by 16 points, was a cliffhanger. Um, uh, but, uh, you, you know, we, you have to remember that in Virginia, the, the main issue only a year after the last election and nine months after the inauguration uh, what was not what Biden's various faux pas in every policy area. It was chiefly a discussion of education and the, the right of parents to express their wishes and, if need be, impose their wishes on local school boards and, uh, and, uh, and, and the personality of the uh, Democratic candidate attempting to come back for a non-consecutive term as governor. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the, the, the total weight of the failure of the Biden regime after only nine months was not the major issue in a, in a state gubernatorial election. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, in New Jersey, where the governor was, was, you know, a reasonably competent man and has a distinguished business record and was the ambassador to Germany. He's a fairly substantial person. But when he said, if taxes are your thing, New Jersey may not be for you, and he almost lost a state that, that, that it was judged to be impossible for him to lose. So I, I, I think these are early omens, but they're positive omens for what we're talking about. Uh, a, a, uh, just, a, a, just, the, a Bidenism and a Bidenized America being an aberration that will be rejected. Uh, this is not the beginning of just, a long-standing movement. I mean, Biden in his delusion likes to compare himself with Franklin D. Roosevelt, yeah. but he and Truman had five straight we terms. Need, we, We're not going to get that out of this group. We need to, we need to, uh, we need to wrap it there, uh, Conrad. But just one quick... I really want a, a one-word answer on this, really. Is, is your pal Donald Trump going to be the nominee in 2024? Uh, I, I believe so. And I... I, I, I I think that the uh, this isn't one word, but it's very few words. I, I think the Republicans are unbeatable, and unless 
uh, his health fails or, or, he, or he completely lapses mm. backwards in his judgment, uh, Trump is unbeatable among the Republicans. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you for that, Conrad Black. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.